Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com. I got a question here that I get this question quite a bit. I'm going to I'm going to try to answer this at least in one way. There's probably a few different ways I could answer this question, but it is what is the programming language of the future. <laughs> so um, I'll read the, read the question I got here. So he says, hi John, let me uh, first thank you a lot for doing what you do. I watch your videos daily and you're really such an inspiration. Well, that's cool. Thank you. And he says, my name is Eric from Stockholm, Sweden. I'm 22 at the moment and I'm studying computer science in college. Prior to this, I've worked as a freelancer within web development, but I wanted to broaden my programming experience. So I hit the books. Right now I'm testing out all sorts of different development from building apps in Swift, learning Java, and right uh, now low level C. My intention is to try to learn as much as possible, but I still feel like I want to specialize in some type of language and really master it. I'm also really interested in AI, artificial intelligence, uh, but don't really know where to start. So my questions to you are, what is your take on the future of programming languages? What would you consider the most essential to master, not only for now, but in terms of the future? And do you have any experience with AI development or know where to start? Um, I'm going to skip the AI development question. I'm just going to ask the, answer the programming language of the future question. <laughs> so I think that the programming language of the future has actually not been invented yet. I don't, I don't think we have that yet. I, I think that what we've got right now is we've got a lot of languages that are evolving towards it, but they're, they're evolving in complexity to, to the point that we need an, a, a, a simplification, right? A lot of times what ends up happening with technology is that we end up having sort of this pileup where we, we build up these huge things and then we have this massive collapse as a new level of abstraction is, is put down on top of it and sort of paves over it and now we can, we can simplify things, right? So the reason why I say that is that because languages like C Sharp and Java have, have become very bloated. They're, they're very good languages and they're very expressive. You can do a lot with them. Even, even some things like, you know, even Ruby and Python and whatnot, they, they, we've, we've got a lot of different things. We've got a lot of concepts where, I mean, if you think about, I'll just pick on one that I know, which is C Sharp, which is we've essentially taken the language of C Sharp and we've added a lot of functional programming to it. You can essentially do functional programming in C Sharp. You can write C Sharp code that is purely functional, okay? And that's, that's sort of, you know, the, if you think about all the different keywords, all the different things, and as C Sharp keeps on growing, that's a lot of stuff, okay? And so we, we've kind of hit this point where you can do anything, but is that, is that really what, what we need? What we need is, is to simplify, right? So w we need to take all those concepts as we're learning, as we're evolving these languages, and we eventually need to come up with a language that's going to be a little bit more universal. There's really no reason why we have to have so many programming languages. Right now, almost all programming languages are kind of converging to this point where they all are kind of on par with what they can do functional-wise. Right. If you look again at, at some of the ones that I'm more familiar with, I know that C sharp now can do a lot. You can write functional in, in it, right? So you can do this similar kind of coding that you would have done with F sharp or Haskell or uh, or you know one of those other functional Lisp and functional languages, right? At the same time, Java has also developed now functional program. You can do purely f Java or functional programming in Java. I saw a Hacker News article where someone was, was writing about how they were doing purely functional programming in Java. It, it, it was a little bit of a bastardization of it, but hey, I, I could see that happening. And, and C Sharp and Java are almost equivalent, right? Java started getting all these features that, that was being innovated in C Sharp. So I, I, I think that there's really no reason why we have to have all these different programming languages at this point because they're all kind of able to do do everything. Now there's some specialized languages and I, and I understand the argument for that. So maybe maybe there'll be you know a few different specialized languages but we really need to come to a point where we have a general purpose programming language that we just use that everyone uses and, and, and gets developed and is simplified because there's just there's no reason, right? There, if there used to be a reason why we had all these specialized languages and they existed for specific purposes, and there's still, like I said, still some to some degree, you know, languages like R and, and whatnot. But 
even those, I think we can really collapse under, under one programming language, and that will make the f things a lot more effective for the future because we don't have to learn as many things. There's not as much gaps between communication. So that's what I think, is that I think we're heading towards this point. I think we'll eventually have a language that dominates. I think we're still early in the development of software development as a career as a profession as a science if you will and that that will eventually hit that just like i mean mathematics has a a standard mathematical notation right i mean there's there there is a bunch of different ones right and now there's just like one way in general i mean maybe there's a couple of competing but there's one general way that we do mathematics and we write down you know uh, th we have different symbols that we utilize and we, we we pretty much standardize on that I think that programming is no different that we'll eventually find that we just haven't found that yet as a, as for today uh, I, I really couldn't say what what programming language that, that I'd recommend. I did a video on the most popular programming languages for 2017 you can check that one out if you're curious what my thoughts are on that, you know, it changes from day to day. We've got a lot of fluctuation. JavaScript is still a, a probably a pretty good bet at, at this point to, to hit your, your wagon to. And, and Python is also one of those ones that I, I think that I see really, really increasing. But, you know, it's, it's really hard to say at this point because it, we, we, we still have this very much... Uh, diversified field of, of programming languages out there. I, I do hope that we do converge on one though and, and, and I do think that that's the future. I, I, I can't see us having just this many programming languages that are now all becoming closer and closer to functionally equivalent and, and it just, just doesn't make sense, right? If you can do the same stuff you can do in C Sharp and Java and Python and Ruby and, and all the other programming languages, why why have so many of them and, and make things so confusing? But you know what? Technology is, is never, it, it, it doesn't always follow the straightforward path that I would like it to. <laughs> All right, if you, uh, if you like this video and you wanna get more videos like this one on programming, software development, living a better life, improving your fitness, achieving your goals, click that subscribe button below and I'll talk to you next time, take care.